The Saab Jazz 39 Gripen, Sweden's flagship multi-role fighter, is renowned for its agility, cost-effectiveness, and versatility, making it a cornerstone of modern air forces in nations like Sweden, Brazil, and Hungary. Powered currently by the General Electric F44G, designated RM16 in Sweden, for the Gripen EF variants, and the Volvo RM12, a derivative of the GE F404, for the CD models, the Gripen has consistently delivered robust performance in air superiority, ground attack, and reconnaissance missions. Recent discussions, however, have spotlighted the potential integration of the Eurojet EJ230 engine, a proposed variant of the Rolls-Royce-led EJ200 turbofan used in the Eurofighter Typhoon as a means to enhance the Gripen's capabilities and circumvent geopolitical export constraints. The Eurojet EJ230 emerged in the late 1990s as a conceptual upgrade to the EJ200, designed to offer increased thrust and advanced features like thrust vectoring for enhanced maneuverability. During this period, Eurojet proposed integrating a 102 kilonewton thrust EJ230 with an axisymmetric thrust vectoring nozzle into a Gripen demonstrator, aiming to showcase its potential for export markets. The plan included a 700-hour flight test program to validate the engine's performance in the Gripen single-engine airframe. Despite its promise, the initiative stalled, likely due to the high costs of integration and the proven reliability of the GE-based engines. Fast forward to April 2025, unverified claims from sources like the YouTube channel Global Defense Corp and social media platforms such as X and Reddit have reignited speculation suggesting that Saab is offering the Gripen E with the EJ230 to prospective buyers wary of U.S. export restrictions on the F44G. These restrictions, exemplified by recent U.S. vetoes on Gripen sales to Colombia, underscore the strategic appeal of a European engine. However, no official confirmation from Saab or credible industry sources supports these claims and the Gripen E's technical documentation continues to list the F414G as its power plant. The EJ230 remains a prototype, and its integration into the Gripen would require significant engineering efforts, raising questions about its practicality. To understand the potential impact of the EJ230, it's essential to compare its specifications with the F44G. The F44G delivers 98 kilonewton of thrust with afterburner and approximately 63 kilonewton dry, achieving a thrust to weight ratio of around nine to one. Weighing about 1,110 kilograms, it is a proven engine optimized for single engine fighters like the Gripen E and the F18E F Super Hornet. Its design supports super cruise, sustained supersonic flight without afterburner, enhancing fuel efficiency and mission range. The EJ230, by contrast, is projected to offer 102 kilonewton of thrust with speculative claims of up to 120 kilonewton in future iterations, potentially surpassing the F44G by 422%. Based on the EJ200's characteristics, the EJ230 would weigh approximately 1,000 to 1,200 kilograms, depending on whether it incorporates a thrust vectoring nozzle and could achieve a thrust to weight ratio comparable to or better than the EJ200's 9.51. The EJ200's lower specific fuel consumption suggests the EJ230 could improve fuel efficiency by 5 to 10%, a critical advantage for extended missions. Additionally, the proposed thrust vectoring capability could enhance maneuverability, allowing the Gripen to perform tighter turns and higher angle of attack maneuvers potentially giving it an edge in dogfights against adversaries like the Su-30 or Rafale. Hypothetically, equipping the Gripen E with the EJ-230 would yield several performance benefits. The baseline Gripen E with the F-414G achieves a maximum speed of Mach 2 at high altitude, a combat radius of approximately 500 miles or 800 kilometers, and a thrust to weight ratio of 0.97, based on an empty weight of 8,000 kilograms. Its delta wing canard design, coupled with fly-by-wire controls and relaxed stability, ensures excellent agility, 
though its single-engine configuration limits thrust compared to twin-engine competitors. The EJ230's 102 kN thrust would provide a modest 4% increase, improving acceleration and climb rate, while a speculative 120 kN variant could significantly enhance these metrics by 22%. Thrust vectoring would further augment maneuverability, enabling rapid directional changes and improved performance in close combat scenarios. The EJ230's lower SFC could extend the combat radius to 525 to 550 miles, enhancing mission endurance for patrol or strike roles in countries like Portugal or Brazil. Moreover, the EJ200 family's supercruise efficiency suggests the EJ30 could maintain or improve the Gripen's ability to sustain supersonic speeds without excessive fuel burn, a tactical advantage in intercept missions. However, these benefits come with significant challenges. The EJ230's thrust vectoring nozzle could add 100 to 200 kilograms to the engine's weight, potentially reducing the aircraft's overall thrust-to-weight ratio to 0.94 to 0.95 unless offset by higher thrust or airframe optimizations. The Gripen E's airframe, designed around the F414G's dimensions and airflow requirements, would require modifications to accommodate the EJ230 including adjustments to the air intakes and engine bay. Such changes could escalate costs and introduce integration risks, as the EJ200 family has not been proven in single-engine fighters. The F414G, by contrast, benefits from a mature supply chain and extensive operational data, ensuring high reliability and lower maintenance costs. The EJ230's prototype status raises concerns about its reliability and the complexity of its thrust vectoring system, which could increase downtime and maintenance expenses. Financially, developing and integrating the EJ230 would likely cost billions, potentially raising the Gripen E's unit price, currently $80 to $100 million, and undermining its cost effectiveness against competitors like the F-16V or F-35. These factors suggest that the EJ230's adoption would require a substantial commitment, likely driven by a major export order from a NATO ally or a strategically significant buyer like India. Strategically, the EJ230 offers a compelling advantage, its European origin. U.S. export controls on the F-414G have constrained Gripen sales, as seen in Colombia, where geopolitical considerations favored European platforms like the Rafale. An EJ-230-powered Gripen could appeal to nations seeking autonomy from U.S. influence, including NATO members like Portugal or non-aligned countries. However, the F-414G's proven performance and lower risk profile make it the pragmatic choice for current operators. The Gripen E's existing capabilities, Mach 2 speed, supercruise, and a 7,200 kg payload across 10 pylon stations, meet the demands of most modern air forces, and the F-414G's reliability ensures operational readiness. Social media discussions argue that investing in EJ-230 integration might be less cost-effective than developing a new platform for the sixth-generation fighter landscape especially given the rapid evolution of air combat technologies. In conclusion, while the Rolls-Royce EJ-230 holds theoretical promise for the Saab JAS-39 Gripen, its integration remains speculative as of April 2025, with no official backing from Saab. The EJ-230 could enhance the Gripen E's thrust, maneuverability, and fuel efficiency, potentially extending its combat radius and agility, but these gains are tempered by increased weight, unproven reliability, and substantial development costs. The GE F414G, with its proven track record and cost effectiveness, remains the superior choice for the Gripen's current and near-term needs. The EJ230's primary appeal lies in its potential to bypass U.S. export restrictions, but without a major financial and strategic impetus, the Gripen E is likely to continue leveraging the F-414G's strengths. As Air Forces worldwide navigate evolving threats and geopolitical dynamics, the Gripen's future may hinge on balancing performance upgrades with economic and political realities.